Hello and welcome to the Chauvin Arnu UK channel. I'm David Savory with a quick start video series of the many features of the CA6117 multifunction installation tester to help you get the most out of this capable instrument. I'm going to demonstrate the basic loop and line impedance functions of the CA6117 in this video. I shall be starting with the earth fault loop impedance testing with the instrument dial set to the ZS function. To show the basics of loop impedance testing, I'm going to perform two tests with the 6117 at my distribution board. The first is a two lead impedance test to ascertain the external impedance for this DB where there is no upfront residual current device. I'll then show the three lead no trip test on a final circuit, which happens to be protected by an AFDD RCBO rated at 30 milliamps. Starting with the two lead test, I use the first soft key to select the trip mode, which, as its name suggests, would trip any RCD upstream. Here, where there isn't an RCD, this test should give me the most accurate result. Under the next soft key, I can null my leads once I've joined them all together, which may be an unusual step for this kind of test, but because the 6117 has a granularity of scale to three digits instead of the usual two digits of most other models, discounting the impedance of the test leads is important to maintain accuracy. Pushing test with the leads connected will quickly perform the nulling function. The third soft key allows me to set the test parameters. In electrically noisy environments, I can turn on signal smoothing, which will cause the test to take a little longer, but will help iron out any noise for better accuracy. I can also set the voltage reference standard for the calculations the instrument will perform, which generally in the UK, you'll want set either at 230 volts or to ULN, which uses the potential as measured between line and neutral. To undertake the two lead test, I've turned off the DB and disconnected the supplier earth to allow me to test that directly without any parallel paths from the likes of bonded metalwork to skew the result. In some cases, especially commercial environments, it may not be possible to power down the installation and the reading may have to be taken as ZS at DB. This is a three phase environment. I'm just testing L1 for the purposes of this demonstration. So the green PE port I'll connect to the supplier earth the red line port I'll place onto L1. When I undertake the test, we see a resistive component of 0.247 ohm, an inductive component of 0 millihenries, therefore an overall impedance recorded at 0.247 ohm. Few MFTs can report to three digits and show how the impedance is split between resistive and inductive elements. The fault current has been calculated by the instrument at 934 amps based on 230 volts as the selected reference, although if we switch to the next screen we're informed that ULN was slightly higher at 239.1 volt measured here today. With my earthing reconnected and the DB powered back on, I can show you a 3 lead test at any of my final circuits to obtain an impedance reading downstream from a residual current device. Here, this socket circuit is protected by an AFDD RCBO at 30 milliamps. If I use the first soft key to enter the test parameters, we've seen I can choose 6, 9 or 12 milliamps as the current the 6 7 will use when testing through a residual current device. With no loads connected, the higher values can be selected. However, if loads are still present, then the default 6 milliamp setting is the least likely to trouble my RCD, as it allows an existing background of at least 9 milliamps to already be present. Using either three probe leads, or for convenience, the plug top lead here, I can press start to begin testing. In this particular configuration, the wiring serving this socket has been run alongside the wiring serving a separate lighting circuit. So here we should see some small inductance. Indeed, the test result gives us the impedance as the measured resistance plus the measured inductance, with 0.65 ohm being recorded. Dialing the selector to the line impedance function ZI will allow us to ascertain the short circuit characteristics of the wiring under test or to record voltage drop. The first soft key toggles between these two functions, DV for volt drop, ZI for short circuit current. When I run the current test, the instrument determines the short circuit current based on the set voltage reference and line neutral impedance and calculates the result. Switching the 6117 to voltage drop will help us to determine whether the cross-sectional area of our wiring is sufficient on any given circuit. 
we first need to take a reference reading at the source of our circuit, so that would involve connecting our three leads to neutral protective earth and the output of our fuse or breaker. With our test leads connected at the circuit source, we push the test button to take a reading. Then we press the second soft key twice to record that reading as our reference. We then move the 6117 to our circuit endpoint, which in the real world may be many meters away, where with the circuit under its design load, we press the test button again to obtain a second reading. The percentage voltage drop between source and endpoint is displayed, and generally speaking, it should be within 5%. The third soft key allows an audible alarm indication threshold to be set for a defined percentage on voltage drop, if desired. One thing to note with the audio feature is that for it to work, the audio must be set as on in the global setup menu, as that overrides the individual test settings. If the global option is set to mute, then the instrument will not make any sound on most tests, although the display will still visually show either a tick or a red bell icon for any result below or above the programmed threshold. That's the basic impedance function of the 6117, but this instrument has a lot more capability, so do review the other videos in this series to see the other features and functions. Thanks for your time.